was born in 1937. 2006. <laughs> People try to put us down. Talking about my generation. Just because we get around. Talking about my generation. Hi, Lynn. Would you introduce yourself to me like we just met? We did just meet, so I would be glad to introduce yourself to me, but I never know quite what that means. I, uh, I love animals. I uh, can tell stories about animals till people get bored <laughs> and, and leave the room. I grew up in Northwest Iowa. I um, thought I'd be a kindergarten teacher, and then I was a physical education teacher, and then I sold World Book, and then I traveled the world with a woman by the name of Dr. Jean Houston, and then I moved to Minnesota, and then I heard about One Voice, and that's why I'm here today. And what about you? What can you introduce? How would you introduce yourself to me? Oh, boy. Well, I'm Irene. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am a young person. I'm in high school. I like singing and performing and, yeah, trying to figure out how to navigate the world. That's and here we are. <laughs> That's 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 quite a that's quite a task. Do you have any? Yeah, you have, I don't really have advice on it. I'm just that's any, what we're here doing. Do you have I guess. any pets in your house? I have a cat. And what's she's your cat's very name? mean to me. Her name is Pesto. Well, then I invite you to my house to meet. Three I would good love to because I have like a thing against animals. Three, Not all animals. Three good cats. That's great. Well, she used to be good. And she's live, good to everyone else. Just well, me. We decided no. that maybe we live close enough that you. Can yes, come that's and true. Visit us. How did you uh, how did you start singing? How did you start singing in One Voice? What 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 got you into Young One Voice? Yeah, I saw the One Voice movie, and and that movie was on water, wasn't it? Something yeah, do I don't know. Water. water is life. Is that what it was called? Something like that. Yeah, something cool. Um, and it was really moving, and the singing and the community and all of the parts of it were wonderful. And I was looking to be back in choir, and I was like, that seems like a pretty cool choir to be a part of. So okay. I auditioned. How well, about you? Good. I uh, We rented a house in Minneapolis, and one of the people that came to rent us uh, from us was uh, singing in one voice, and she gave me a couple of tickets to one voice. And I really enjoyed it. And that was the time when one voice was doing a lot of They'd have a song and then there'd be four or five or six people dancing. And I always oh, got awesome. such, a, such a kick out of that. I'm so excited and, we're bringing uh, dancing back. So I got used to it. And then I went to a concert where they had a special person come in by the name of Ann Reed. And I love her music. And after that, I signed up and joined One Voice. And also, I have a wife and uh, we were married, um, the second couple married by the mayor when it was legal. And so one voice is an LGBTQA and whatever else it is, chorus is appealed to me. I'd never been yeah. in any kind of a group that had that kind of a association. For sure. Do you have a favorite one voice memory? I don't think so. I don't think I have a favorite memory. I've, I've enjoyed so much about one voice and the people that I've been with, but offhand, I can't think. I've been singing for 24 years and mm -hmm. I can't, think of one particular thing. And you've been how long in One Voice? Just this season. Do so you almost have a, a favorite year. memory in your I don't know if I year. have a favorite memory. I can think of a few good memories and even one of them just being like after my audition because it had been so long since I like, I don't know, it was right after a pandemic. So I was singing all the time, too much for my parents. Um, <laughs> but like, I just even remember I came out and like later my mom was like, that like, there was a good look on your face. <laughs> like she was like, you gotta, you gotta stay with that. Right. Um, so I remember that being like a new, I don't know, I was just very excited to be back to kind of myself. So that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Um, this, is, this was the first chorus that I'd sung, this is the first time I'd sung in a group for 30 years. Yeah. And so when I tried out, it was like, well, you know, yeah. I, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. <laughs> And now it would be very difficult for me to quit and re and try out again because the voices are of such quality. People come in with such training. Well, I think voices. it's a part of having so many different people and backgrounds and ideas. It's that awesome. It's just awesome. When we get wonderful. people up and that that conduct the chorus when, yeah. when Jane isn't there. Oh my gosh, this last I woman, it's like 
I'm, I was know, like, oh, it's, boy. It's awesome. And she, she said that it was such a treat for her. She'd always wanted to get up in front of like one voice yeah. and, and direct it. So that was, you know. Do you have any thoughts about the concert that's coming up, the Generations concert? Yeah, I'm excited for the concert. I think kind of like what I was just saying about like how our choir has so many different people and backgrounds and ideas and identities. I think like this identities idea is right. <laughs> of, yeah, a lot of identities. I think this idea of generations is like so important to focus on, especially because like, I don't know, we talk about a lot and we should be talking about a lot of different identities, but like less about generations maybe and about like different ages within our choir and within our community and within everywhere. So I think it's really interesting also like it was kind of fun to hear it as like a youth and the youngest one in the choir to be like, oh, okay, isn't that generations. I know. Isn't that Did something? you have any feelings about that? About being the oldest? Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of funny. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I uh, I've gotten a kick out of it because yeah. I've been the oldest one for for 24 years, except for one season. And uh, and that's your claim to fame. So that's my claim to fame. <laughs> and so yeah, I. Um, yeah. And about the Generations concert, I think I am the same as, as you are in many ways. It's like an acknowledgement of the, of the differences and of the similarities. And to, uh, to me, um, one of the pieces was written about a certain living area in, in Minneapolis, the Spirit mm -hmm. of the Lakes. And, and I haven't been there. I haven't explored living there. And uh, I went to a, a process to talk to Gene and the fellow who was writing the song. And I I wondered why I was there, because it was all focused on Spirit of the Lake, Spirit of the Lake. And then, to my surprise and almost my chagrin, <laughs> almost every song from the elders, almost every word from the elders song is what I said at it. And I, I just get the awesome. biggest kick out of that, that uh, I just wondered why I was there. So, yeah. But Generations, yeah. It's, uh, and I love the, the aspect of, of old to young, too, because... Yeah because there's such an interchange of what life is about. Well, I think it's so hard like in our society to find those connections and like sometimes like trust each other trust. from different generations, you know, because I think people are so focused on trust is interesting what word. is different about everyone instead of yeah. like there's so many things that are kind of similar, you know. Well, and there's such a diverse group within one voice, much more so than I think used to be. Mm -hmm. I used to say to people, yeah, I sing in a, a GLBTA chorus mm -hmm. and I don't know who's who, you know, but I don't know who's straight and who's gay and we welcome anybody, mm -hmm. you know. So I got a, I got a kick out of that one too. Yeah. What, is there anything, I mean, we kind of were just talking about it, but is there anything else that you're like particularly excited about with this concert? Uh, there's a song that we've sung before, and when we first sang it, I just got tears in my eyes. And mm -hmm. it's about the, the two people that are growing older together. Mm -hmm. And it's such a, it's such a, a text and such a singing it, thing. It's like, yeah, it's you so know, when gorgeous. they talk about being out in the sun together and, and having fun and, and nothing, and it's like, Oh yeah, you know, I, I mean, remember that. <laughs> I think the music, the musicality of that song too, even like the yeah. part that we're doing that is not the focus of the song, but like the ooing and aahing in the back has yeah. so much depth to it. And like the different swells are just like so interesting yeah. to go with the, the have words. Have you, uh, have you ever had an LGBT mentor or a, a person that has come out to, and you know they're out that you can relate to that has been helpful to you? Um, I think I've had a lot, like a lot of my mentors. And I think that also maybe is, I mean, I don't know, I'm assuming, but like a different, like I've grown up around a lot of out LGBTQ plus people in mm -hmm. my life. And like mm -hmm. a lot of people who are able to, you know, that's a big part of their identity in the world. I have had a mentor who I actually wrote an album with. Really? And yeah, I have sung have with a fun. bunch. And yeah, she is married she has a wife and yeah. i don't know i something about also like that wasn't a huge that's not a huge part of her identity like she's not that's not her her main thing she just right. is a lesbian you know yeah. what i mean which i think is like so great to have because yeah. that's you know well and that's a word that has taken people. me a long time to use yeah when we moved from overseas where we lived as a couple in a community mm -hmm. and moved to minneapolis my my partner then mm -hmm. was introducing me, you know, as her partner and we'd been together and I'm going, 
I don't know, you know, because I hadn't been around that. I had never yeah. been around a group. That's not true. I had never been around a large group of people, but I'd been around a small group, you know, that were activists. And I always wondered if they were going to get carted away like Joan of the Ark because yeah. they were activated, acting about everything. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly. Yeah. I don't think I had a mentor. If I've ever had somebody I admired, mm -hmm. it would be Jean, Jane yeah. Ramsey Miller. Um, For sure. Because I've never experienced anyone so good at being, yeah, absolutely. being the person up there taking care of everything. And uh, so, if I, and so I, I haven't talked to her about anything, but I admire her so much and her skills and her, her way of being. But I don't really think I ever had a mentor as, as a model. Yeah. yeah. What about, like, have you ever had a younger LGBTQ person look up to you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I have, there's one, there's one woman in course, but she's not much younger, mm -hmm. you know, but as I'm going to be, as old as I'm going to be, younger could be 60, you know. Yeah. And she does. Absolutely. She does admire me. She wants to know what my life is like, and she loves to give me a ride because then she gets that. a chance to talk to me. So I guess you could say yes to that, but I can only think of, of her at the moment. How yeah. about yourself at 16? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, not that I know of, kind yeah. of like you were saying. I mean, it's hard, like, admirer is kind of a... Yeah. I don't know even really what that means. I mean, I know what it means, but like the specifics. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. yeah. And um, do you have advice that you'd give to your younger self? Oh, man. <laughs> because, I mean, I don't know when you came out or when you thought about that, but is there a, something that you could say to yourself three, four, five years ago that I mean, might have been helpful? I think like, the thing about identity that's so hard like for me I think I felt a lot of pressure in a weird way like especially also I go to an art school and it's like very LGBTQ and I think I felt a lot of pressure to like immediately know who I was in the world um, uh. and I think that just kind of like just letting myself be who I needed to be yeah. would have been a maybe a better choice and be more important like to me now I'm just like I just live in the world. I'm just being myself. Like, let's just see what happens. You know what I mean? Opposed to like so many labels and identities. And yeah. I had no idea what to think of anything yeah. other than a little <laughs> tinge here and a little tinge there when I was your age. And there was, there was nothing that was defined for me at all. Yeah. Or was there a way to define it? And um, it would have made a difference if it probably would have made a difference to me if, if, people were out and if the newspaper was out and if people were talking about it in a reasonable way. I grew up in a small town mm -hmm. in Iowa and even when I was in relationship as a lesbian, mm -hmm. which is a hard word for me, but when I was in a relationship, the woman and I sat and talked to my mother and she didn't have any idea that we were in relationship. Mm -hmm. It was not something that she was comfortable with. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, yeah I yeah. think that's something that's so, I mean, there's still so much that we have to go further in our world now, but I think that's something that's like. Well, and I think that I always very... felt it was okay, but I knew yeah. that nobody else did. Yeah. I guess that's an easy way to say it. Yeah. That, uh, it wasn't something I talked to people about. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> I mean, that's something that's like not necessarily 100% different in our world now, but like yeah. very different in the way of like just. I don't know, even people that I'm surrounded by, like it's very present in my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you have any advice you would give to your younger self? No, just it would have been helpful, I think, to, like I just said, it would have been helpful yeah. to have stuff out and not just in the, you know, in the closet, so to speak, but to have people talk about it in any kind of a positive way would have been real interesting for me as a younger person. Yeah. But more than that, I don't think I have advice for my younger self. Because, you know, I, I was kind of always myself. And, yeah. And uh, I, had a, I had an older brother that died when I was 13. And my mother always felt 
a little bad about the fact that it doesn't have anything to do with being gay or lesbian or anything, mm -hmm. but she always felt that she wished she could have given more to me, that she felt she gave to my brother. Um, but, sure. you know, I was just independent enough that I think what she told me, that's right, what she told me was, if you grow up, that's what she told herself when mm -hmm. I was growing up, if she grows up to be good and quality and all those good things, mm -hmm. it will be because that's what she wants to be. And if she's not, it, you know, because I was going to make up my own mind about everything. And uh, so she just let me be without yeah. giving me a bad time. Yeah. Because I was independent. My funniest story is not for, not for publication, but what oh. I remember, <laughs> but I remember looking at my fingernails when I was a kid. My mother always wanted me to clean them. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't, and I would, and I wouldn't. And I always said to myself, if people don't like me with my dirty fingernails, they don't have to like me at all. So I that, mean, it's I guess true. That shows, it's true. You know, I do clean my fingernails an sometimes. Independence kind Actually, of thing. that's like my biggest life hack of wearing nail polish is that then it doesn't really matter what's under my fingernails because they're <laughs> just painted anyway. Um, do you have something that you look forward to in the future? That's such a big question. <laughs> it's such a big question for anybody. You yeah. Know? We belong to a, a neighborhood group. Mm -hmm. that we're trying to figure out how to stay in our own home as long as we can. Now, my, my wife, Linda, and I mm -hmm. are the oldest of the group, but, but they're of an age where, where that's one of them has cancer and one of them has surgery and one of them has something else. But it's, um, it's really something to, to figure out that we're going to stay in our house as long as we can. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've changed stuff around a little bit. We also live on a very, very big corner and uh, from this group, we meet uh, once or twice, uh, you know, every couple of months we have a dinner together and we talk about a lot of different things. And I get my whole sidewalk snow plowed and it's like, you know, I wouldn't, I could not do it anymore. I would not put myself in that position mm -hmm. to do it anymore, even though I could, you know, I'm always one of those yeah. that, that could, but we get that kind of support from where we are. So looking forward to the future. It's a puzzle for me. My wife has uh, mm -hmm. Parkinson's, and she's had it for seven years. And it's, it's not big Parkinson's, but it's little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. So I don't, I don't know. I know that I'm going to make the best of whatever it is. What, uh, whatever is going to be, it's, we'll, we'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. yeah. And how about you for the future? <sighs> I mean. That's a deep breath. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of it, which I'm excited for. <laughs> It's just like, I don't know, st the world is stressful, but I'm, and it's hard because I th think I do a lot of thinking about the future when I maybe should be thinking about what I'm looking forward to in the present. Um, but I think there's lots to look forward to. I'm looking forward to life after school, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, like yeah. all kinds of things. I don't really know how my future will look. I mean, I have plenty of ideas in my head, but I think it's nice what are to some just... Of your, what's a couple of your ideas that kind of stick out? I mean, I always would like to be performing. That's my, that's yeah. my main goal. I used to always say, like when people ask me what I wanted to do as a job when I grew up, I always just want, I would always say, one, that I wanted to be making art, and two, that I just wanted to be able to make money doing something that I loved, which I think is like, a hard thing to that's do. A good goal. But that's my that's, that's my goal. goal. That's what I'm looking forward to in my future. Um, do you have anything to say about Jane and what she's like? <laughs> <laughs> Jane Ramsey or Miller is the person I'm sure I've been in chorus for 24 years because I am in awe of the mm -hmm. way that she directs and what she knows about music and how she deals with the chorus and the work that she puts into I mean, the chorus has become really something since, yeah. since Jane has been in. We go out to schools and we sing. We, we travel to gala conferences. We go, we do, we do so many, many things. And, our, and the topic of our concerts is really quite, it's different. We aren't, we aren't singing Christmas carols. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a pretty diverse group singing with us. Um, it's just that she's there, you know, and she shows up and she pays attention to what we're learning and how we're learning it. And she corrects with with care. And uh, and know. she does like when when she was talking about when everyone was talking about like memories of Jane, 
like, and they were just talking about how long she's been there. Like, I was just so in awe. And like, also something that I thought was fun was when people were talking about how they talk about the like before Jane times. That's I keep like, telling everyone that story because I don't know yeah. one. I mean, it is making people nervous, but also well, like one of the, fel- the fellows that gives funny. me a ride was has mm-hmm. been in the course since the beginning, since the yeah. very beginning, and he talks so he knows about, the before Jane he, times. He, he, he talks about we had a conductor one time that I forget what they liked. Uh, some kind of special madrigal music or something. Mm-hmm. So the chorus saying madrigal music, madrigal music. But um, what is Jane like? She's lovable. She's yeah. likable. She's someone to look up to and admire. And mm-hmm. um, absolutely. And that's what I do. Well, I think all the things that she does, she just does so well and with yeah. so much grace and so much care that that is what makes her all of those things. Like, and, and she took a year off and went and got more degree in, in her in her yeah. studies. I mean, she cares a lot. I think that's one of the biggest things. Like, she has the ability to make things happen, and she really cares to do that. Yeah. And I think that's so important. And so, like not always there in people and like a wonderful thing to have around. Well, in the time that you've been in yeah. the, with Jane, is there some one thing that she did or some memory I don't, you have? It's hard for me. I mean, I've, I'm new, newer and I'm definitely but newer than been, you. But, but you've <laughs> been in chorus. You've been yeah. and you've had time to make those. I mean, I don't know, like sp- a specific thing. It's hard for me to think of like a specific. Yeah. I think one I of know, the things that one? I'm fond of is her sense of humor. Mm-hmm. That Absolutely. she can just make fun of herself or make an, a mistake in what she really wants to say, and everybody laughs. And I think that ability is also that. what lets people be vulnerable in their music and in themselves. Because if we're, we can all be fools together, then and surely one of the we things can also... that's changed, of course, for me is that several years ago it was always trying to get people to stop talking. Mm-hmm. When Jane was up there trying to get people to stop talking, and now after much training and work and, mm-hmm. and Darcy helping out with getting people to quiet down, there's very little talking that goes on, very little interference with her directing. But yeah. So you're saying I? more talking, back to the interruptions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only time she ever called me out was one time. You know, she wanted me to stop talking. Worst day of your life. <laughs> <laughs> but, and that's uh, your fondest memory but of I Jane. Honor, I honor her just terrifically. Yeah, and me I'm, too. I'm, Absolutely. I'm, extremely bereft that she's leaving and yeah. I'm extremely delighted that she's doing what she needs to do. I'm so excited for her yeah. journey. People try to put us down Talking about my generation Just because we get around Talking about my generation Things they do are cool for cool Talking about my generation I hope I die before I get old Talking about my generation I find out a lot about people just sitting and talking to them, you know, yeah. and asking them about their dog. I guess yeah, that's true. And you're welcome to come and see my three cats. I would love to come see one your three cats. One is one, cats. one is two, and one is eight. I have one and don't know how old it is. <laughs> but it is mean. So Isn't that something? It's so strange. It just comes into my room to barf and pee and like throw really? up in the floor. And it doesn't do that anywhere else in the house. It just likes that is an amazing it's like, it's against story. Me. Well, I accidentally, Have you researched it all? Have you talked to people about yes. it? Yes. Well, we've done all this stuff. It used to be very social and nice. And then the pandemic came and now it only likes my parents and no one else. But I lived there the whole pandemic. So I don't know why, what she has against me. And also it's supposed to be my cat. So I'm like, well, forget girl that. needs to calm just forget, down. Just forget about ownership. You know? Well, I'm not trying to. I'm just saying, like, I'm the one who kept asking for a cat. Like, she should have to owe me something. She should. Well, where did you get her? Animal Humane Society. Well, she came with a background that you don't know about. It might not <laughs> have true. anything to do. Well, but she used to it be so nice. It might not have anything to do with you. It's true. You probably doesn't. You got older. I know. Older, yeah. meaner. Yeah. Sometimes I step on her by accident. Yeah, see? Probably that. Come and see my cat. Not in a not in a horrible Come way. Come and see my cat. You'll feel better about cats. I will. <laughs>